Hey guys, once again welcome to our channel. In today's video we will be dealing with a new concept. Uh, actually not a new concept but yeah it's an extension of one of the concepts that we have been dealing with in our previous videos and that was isotopes I remember the name. And in today's video we will be dealing with that extension and as you can suggest by the video's thumbnail the name of the concept is types of isotopes and their uses. So we'll be discussing different types of isotopes and their uses all right so let's just shine some light before getting started off with this concept let's just uh, shine some light on the concept that we, we have been dealing with in our previous videos the isotopes what are exactly they so we discussed that isotopes are like they are alternative alternative versions of the elements that have a different atomic mass but the same atomic number this means they have um, same number of protons and electrons but a different number of neutrons they, are, they really only differ in their mass. Now, the, the atomic number of an atom, of an element, is simply the number of protons present in its atom. We already discussed that. While atomic mass depends on how many neutrons it has. So the general, the basic definition of isotopes is that there are isotopes of the same element have different quantities of neutrons though to, to, to the proton count is the same. Now scientists divide isotopes into two main types that we have that we will be dealing now in a moment so before getting started off let's just have a look at the syllabus so almost uh, we have covered the isotopes uh, concept just the last part is uh, remained uh, yeah so here now we have covered almost there are how many points one two three four five so we have covered fi first five points and we will be covering the sixth point now and that is state two types of isotopes as being radioactive and non-radioactive all right now let's just complete my statement yeah so scientists divide isotopes into two main types radioactive and stable that i mean non-radioactive but yeah we will, we will not be discussing non-radioactive uh, because they're stable atoms the only according to our igcc syllabus we will be only covering the radioactive part uh, because they are artificial, they are lab-made, and they are unstable. Yeah. So now moving on to the next slide. Let's just look, have a look at this in a bit more detail. So types of isotopes. So we already discussed it can be categorized into two types. Radioactive and non-radioactive. And radioactive isotopes or radio, uh, radio isotopes are unstable due to the imbalance of neutrons and protons which causes the nucleus to decay over time through nuclear fission and emit radiation. Now these examples of radioisotopes include tritium and carbon-14. Now decay occurs at different rate for each isotope but the time taken for the radioactivity of an isotope to decrease by 50% is constant and for that particular isotope and is known as the half-life. Radioactive isotopes have numerous medical and industrial uses that we will be discussing in a moment and non-radioactive isotopes are stable atoms which really only differ in their mass. So now let's just explain all of, all of this stuff. Now, firstly, let me just go to the last point that we won't be covering. So non-radioisotopes uh, non are stable atoms, so we won't be discussing that. So our main focus will be on radioactive isotopes, all right? Now, now, Radioactive isotopes, they are unstable. Why they are unstable? Because they have an unstable combination of protons and neutrons. And these isotopes decay, emitting radiation that includes alpha, beta, and gamma rays. Scientists classify radioactive isotopes according to their creation process. They are long-lived, they are cosmogenic, they are anthropogenic, and radiogenic. But you, don't, you do not have to... Um, mention these terms in your examination papers so, and uh, decay occurs at different rate for each isotope uh, but the time taken for the radioactivity of an isotope to decrease by 50% is constant for that particular isotope and is known as the half-life and this statement we don't have to go through detail just we have to know this part all right just have like a knowledge about this part not in detail okay just something uh, like it's additional for now, it's additional at this stage. Now, radioactive isotopes or radioisotopes have numerous medical and industrial uses. And now we will be discussing those medical and industrial uses. Uh, firstly, discussing our medical uses.
all right so medical uses now radio radiation is extremely harmful and kills cells so isotopes are used to treat cancer the isotope cobalt 60 is frequently used for this purpose now they also act as medical traces as certain parts of the body absorb isotopes and others do not. In this way, an isotope can be injected into the blood and its path to the body traced with a radioactive detecting camera, revealing the flow of blood through bodily system. You know, just to measure your blood pressure, that type of thing. And medical instruments and materials are routinely sterilized by exposure to radiation, which kills any bacteria present. Yeah. So how it works? Um, so whenever, um, for example, let me just give you a daily life example. So what happens in an operation, um, in the operation theater? So what happens? The doctors are using the instruments, uh, maybe used to cut your flesh or just um, make sure uh, or sending something, um, injecting something, you know, or injection, uh, um, injecting something. So these uh, routine, like these instruments, they are routinely sterilized by exposure to radiation because... The benefit of this radiation is that this kills any bacteria present, all right? And you will also say, you will also um, come across that radioactive isotopes, they, are, they also find uses in agriculture, food industry, pest control, archaeology and medicine. Radiocarbon dating, which measures the age of a carbon bearing atom, uses the radioactive isotope known as carbon-14. In medicine, gamma rays emitted by the radioactive elements are used to detect tumors inside the human body. This also... Um, this, also, this is also a benefit of well, one of the medical uses, medical benefits of these radioisotopes and food eradication. And that's the process of exposing food to a control level of gamma rays, which kills many type of bacteria present, making food safer to eat. So it also makes food safer to eat. Now coming through the, coming across the uh, industrial uses. So what are the industrial uses? of these radioisotopes. Now radioactive dating uses the carbon-14 isotopes to date carbon-containing materials such as organic matter, rocks and other artifacts. One more important thing to know that is the half-life of C14 is 5730 years and so this technique is often used to date very old historical objects. And one exam tip for you guys is that uh, one more, sorry, I just, I just missed out some point. Uh, similar to medical use, radioactive traces are deployed to deck leaks in oil, uh, gas, or oil pi uh, gas or oil pipes. So as I mentioned before, these, uh, how they provide a medical use, how they are medically beneficial, they detect, um, now for example, in their industrial uses, they include, they detect leaks in oil, gases, and pipes. So that we need to know. And... We also discussed how they're similar to medical use, how they are uh, medically beneficial. They kill the bacteria, many types of bacteria and food and radiocarbon dating, which uses the age of uh, carbon bearing items. This is a radioactive isotope known as carbon-14 in medicine. In medicine, we discussed that uh, the gamma rays kills the instruments. They are used to detect tumors. Likewise, uh, radioactive traces are deployed to detect leaks in oil or gas pipes. Also, one more important point that radioactive isotope uranium-235 is used in the nuclear and power plants in controlled fission reactions. Now, this is all we need to know. And lastly, there's an example for you guys. Uh, let me just show you. Now, radioactive decay, you might be thinking this is a chemical reaction. How do we need to know any equations? The answer is simple. The answer is no. You do, not need to, you, you do not need to know any chemical equations. Why? You would need to know any chemical equations since it's not considered a chemical reaction. Yeah, so radioactive decay is a random process which occurs inside the nucleus and is independent of any of the conditions. Temperature, that includes temp temperature, pressure, pH, or any other type of conditions. Catalyst is not included. So it's a nuclear process and it's, it's not considered a chemical reaction. And this, and by this we come to an we come to the end of the concept of the isotopes. Are you sure? No, not really, not really. Uh, yeah, one more important concept of isotopes. It's a small concept. Uh, why isotopes share the same properties. So I'll be just, uh, in the next video, we will be just going through that. It's not a big detail, but it's a small, small detail. All right. 
so make sure you are subscribed to the channel you like hit the like button comment down below so as per your suggestions i can post the videos of the topics that you are confused in uh, yeah that's it for today cheers